Coming up on DTNS, lasers generate random numbers faster than you can record them. Facebook has an app for rappers, and AI comes to the drive through This is the Daily Tech News for Monday, March 1st, 2021 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Redwood, I'm Sarah Lane. Coming in from Alaska, producing the show, I'm Amos. And joining us today from Engadget Senior Editor, Nicole Lee is back. Welcome back, Nicole. Hello, happy to be back. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we were just talking on Good Day Internet about Sarah's career as a lanyard maker. Uh, also, <laughs> a lot about squirrels. If you want that expanded show, uh, get Good Day Internet. Become a member at patreon.com slash DTNS. Let's start with a few tech things you should know. Walmart dropped its $35 order minimum for its two-hour express delivery service available to Walmart Plus subscribers, although the service still incurs a flat $10 fee and non-express same-day orders and deliveries still carry a $35 minimum. Walmart says that the delivery service is available through nearly 3,000 Walmart stores, reaching 70% of the U.S. population. Ming-Chi Kuo is back with a note about Apple. It uh, says the iPhone 13 will offer the same form factor and screen size as the iPhone 12, but with a reduced notch area. With the Pro models uh, getting a faster F1.8 ultra-wide camera with autofocus, as well as a 120-hertz screen. Kuo further reports Apple has no plans to adopt USB-C, folks. Sorry, he doesn't think so. Uh, future iPhone devices... Uh, they will not integrate a Touch ID sensor into the power button again either. Again, this is all according to Quo. The note also says the iPhone SE with 5G is coming in H1, first half, 2022, and predicts 2022 iPhones will replace the notch design with a hole punch camera. The group Distributed Denial of Secrets, get it, VDOS, but different, claims to have pulled 70 gigabytes of user data from the social network Gab through an SQL injection vulnerability, including public and private posts, as well as passwords. The group says it will share the data selectively with journalists, social scientists, and researchers. Gab CEO Andrew Torbo said that the site patched a vulnerability to an SQL injection attack last week, but has no confirmation a breach actually took place. The epic Apple fight has a date, folks. In a case management conference Monday, Judge Yvonne Gonzalez-Rogers of the United States District Court for the Northern District of California scheduled epic V. Apple to begin May 3rd. Judge Gonzalez Rogers <laughs> expects the trial to last three to possibly five weeks. After launching in India last September, YouTube Shorts began rolling out as a beta to all users in the U.S. Users can now create and view swipeable one-minute vertical videos with the short section appearing on the mobile app section of the YouTube home screen. All right. Let's talk a little bit more about going places. Remember oh, going places? Uh, barely. Uh, yeah. Good times. Uh, mm. I remember doing that once, maybe 2019 <laughs> or so. Uh, well, people are starting to do it again, which means e-bikes are even hotter. E-bikes have actually been pretty hot during the pandemic, but Lime announced it's going to add 50 new cities to its shared electric bike network by the start of 2022, including 12 new cities in North America. Lime also is making a next-gen electric bike with a more powerful 350-watt motor, which will have a top speed of 20 miles per hour, wear your helmets, folks, and the same swappable batteries as Lime's electric scooters, which are good for 25 miles of range. Lime phased out bikes in favor of scooters, if you remember, back in 2019, but then they got bikes back when they bought Jump from Uber in 2020. Speaking of Jump, Lime does plan to keep Jump bikes in operation, even though it's bringing in its own Lime-branded bikes. Uh, Lime also integrates pedalless bikes from third-party company Wheels and plans to introduce electric mopeds for rent in Paris and Washington, D.C. Nicole, do you use any e-bikes getting around town? No, um, I've only ever seen Lime scooters around where I live, uh, but uh, it's good to see that they're expanding to e-bikes because I know the Lyft bikes are pretty popular around here. So it's interesting to see another competitor pop up for sure. I wonder how much, you know, the, the whole idea of like when pandemic hit and everybody was quarantined and you, could, you couldn't get, you know, a Peloton bike or, you know, all sorts of things where people are like, oh, crap, I can't go to the gym anymore. I have to like build my home gym. What do I need? This, this may have given the whole idea of the e-bikes a, a little bit of a lift, right? The idea of an e-bike is, 
hey, especially in a place like San Francisco or somewhere that has hills, you may need a little boost when you're going up a hill. You're not going to be able to pedal up all, all that, but you are also exercising. And maybe the idea of the scooter, even though it's faster in our world now, the idea of like, well, but I'm also exercising is a little bit more attractive. Yeah, and and the e-bikes uh, let you throw stuff. Sometimes they have in a basket. These new bikes from Lime are going to have a, a holder for your phone, so you can securely have your phone there. I don't read your phone while you're pedaling the bike. I, I, <laughs> don't do but, that. <laughs> but you know, maybe if you're still using uh, corded headphones uh, to plug it in, or or maybe for navigation, could be could be useful for something like that. But uh, yeah, I, I I think I think people also look at scooters still a little bit askance as that's a weird way to get about. Uh, whereas bicycles, everybody's used to. It's a lot more acceptable, more socially acceptable. I think. Yeah. Yeah. It takes a little bit to be a, be a scooter person. Uh, you're, if you're cool, but not all of us are cool enough to be scooter people. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, man, when I lived in Venice, which is a, a, a beach town in LA, I mean, the scooter life was hot. I mean, people also rode a lot of bicycles. Both of those things were were you know very accepted. But it was it was one of those things where I was like, you know, not everywhere in the world w will be able to adopt this in the way that this particular town has because it's flat and there are a lot of you know side streets and you know yeah. people are yielding to bicyclists and and walkers and that sort of thing. But but uh, yeah, I've seen it work. Yeah, I used to live over in that same region, and, and it was Scooter City. Uh, and then I moved away, and I got scooter shock because there were no scooters where I moved for at least right. the first year. Now there's a few. I don't see any e-bikes in this neighborhood. Yeah, I don't either. Well, uh, e-bikes or not, uh, <laughs> you might be interested in this new uh, Facebook experimental project. Facebook's new product experiment uh, experimentation team a.k.a. the NPE team, that's what it's called, launched an app called Bars, B-A-R-S. Yes, Bars as in bars, music bars, as a closed beta on iOS. Bars lets you create and, uh, create and share rap music using studio quality vocal effects and professionally created beats. I'm laughing, but I'm not. It's cool. The app limits videos to 60 seconds, has audio and visual visual filters, includes a challenge mode for freestyle rap and suggested word prompts, and will auto-suggest rhyming words if rhymes are typed into the app. Bars currently has a wait list for access in the beta, and Facebook says it will open access to invites in batches. If you're like, is this familiar to me? I'm not sure. This is NPE's second music-based app, having launched a private beta of Collab, a music video collaboration app, in December of 2020. So I went ahead and signed up for this. I got on the wait list this morning. I was accepted uh, moments later. I, I tried it out a couple of times, and it is a little buggy, uh, and that's probably by design because there are only a few of us kind of trying it out, but... This is, you know, all kidding aside, if you think of the, I don't know, think of the TikTok songs of the world. Like you can think of the, you know, the top five TikTok songs that you hear over and over where it becomes a meme and then everyone creates uh, uh, content based on a meme that already exists. If you mm -hmm. can, using Facebook's NPE uh, bars app, be able to create something that is yours and you created it and then kind of takes on a life of its own and you become uh, known for doing that. I can see where this could be really, uh, I don't know about lucrative, but, um, but, but something that, that gives you new life as a creator. No, Nicole, you're, you're not going to start <laughs> sharing beats with Sarah? Come on. <laughs> well, I mean, for me, it's more of an interesting, I mean, like, I think similar to Facebook's other experimental apps, I don't think this is really meant to be a standalone situation. I think it's really meant to inform and seed existing apps with new features. Um, 
for example, they've made TikTok clones in the past. They've had Instagram Reels, which is kind of a TikTok clone by itself. But it wouldn't surprise me if this is kind of an experiment to experiment, like the name says, an experimental app to experiment with new features and new um, mu- like viral music kind of features or, or tools so that creators can make those uh, viral memes and yeah, viral yeah. audio and uh, and um, maybe in the future maybe they can get compensated for their songs because that's what that's one that's one of the, the big holes and the big uh, missing opportunities for like TikTok and stuff like that with there is there is no real way to compensate the creator in, in, a, in, a, in, a real, in a real way so maybe Facebook this is a way for them to do that and say hey can, can we credit the original uh, creator of this rap bar or whatever or this beat and maybe uh, that would be a way to <laughs> to make money i don't know well uh speaking of monetization instagram's pretty good at that instagram began rolling out live rooms to ios and android users globally which lets four people live stream simultaneously you can add guests all at once or bring them in throughout the live stream you want to have a surprise guest or something any people blocked by a live room participant will not be able to join i don't know how that works you get kicked out if you bring in somebody into the live room who blocked you uh but uh, the idea is that the people joining don't have to worry that someone on their block list would, would be in there and be able to get around the block. Hosts can report and block comments and use comment filters. Company says it's also developing further moderator controls and audio features that'll launch in the coming months. It sounds a bit like a competitor to Clubhouse or maybe Twitter Spaces, but it's also a competitor to Twitch because it's using the Instagram live streaming uh, feature. One edge Instagram can offer, though, is monetization. Uh, options for live fundraisers, integrated shopping, and viewers of these live streams will be able to buy badges to support the hosts. This almost exactly like Twitch. You can do a little like donation buttons and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. It's got the yeah. monetization of Twitch uh, with the friendly uh, informality of a clubhouse, but also with video. <laughs> I mean, when I when I see the stuff, I'm always sort of like, okay, Clubhouse competitor, right? Because Clubhouse is like the hot new now. But I think, okay, what if it was DTNS? Would we be able to four people? I mean, we're usually more than four people, but would this be something that would be possible to offer someone a regular, um, you know, show of sorts? using this model. And in that sense, I'm like, this is actually pretty cool, especially if this is where you've built your audience and this is where your audience is and this is where they're going to, you know, make sense of new stuff that you're trying. Yeah, both bars and live rooms make sense to me. Like 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 Nicole was saying, bars is a creator tool that you can use to make things, in this case rap, that could be used in lots of different places, reels, TikTok, etc. Live rooms is a, is is a feature added to a tool, which is like, okay, we know people are liking getting together for informal chats. Let's make it mm-hmm. easier for that to happen in something we already have, uh, rather than creating a brand new thing. Uh, so Instagram isn't creating a clubhouse clone. It's saying, oh, well, let's look. This is a little smarter. Let's look at what is valuable about clubhouse. Look at what people have been asking us feature wise, and implement that. Uh, so, so yeah, it, it would, if we were starting daily tech news show and we were all, you know, young, uh, Gen Z folks, just, just coming up in the world, uh, we might start it in something <laughs> like live rooms. I wonder, uh, I wonder if there, if people still think of Twitch as kind of a gamer creator space and I think they do. live rooms. Oh, a lot of people TV. do for sure. You know? yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, folks, uh, discord is not just for gamers either. In fact, you can talk about Daily Tech News Show stuff in there. Lots of folks in there talking about it. In fact, we have a, a channel devoted uh, to our Folding at Home team where they're always checking in on their on their uh, rankings and everything. Uh, I think uh, we're, we're pretty close to being in the top 150. You want to talk about that or anything else in Discord, uh, become a member and link your Patreon account from patreon.com slash DTNS. Google updated its Workspace Productivity Suite, formerly known as G Suite, with new features focused on fostering collaboration equity between employees who work from home and employees who work in the office. This includes an event type called Focus Mode, which will limit notifications from Calendar, Gmail, and Chat. Location indicators can be set across apps so coworkers know which days you're in the office, 
versus which days you're at home. Calendars will now have a time insights chart that shows how much time you spent in meetings each week, broken down into recurring and one-time meetings, so you have an idea of where your time is going. Google Workspace Frontline provides a simplified way for admins to set up workspace for specific verticals and integrates with a no-code app sheet apps from Google Sheets. Google Meet now supports joining a meeting from more devices, including the Nest Hub Max, also Tile View. Picture in Picture and Split Screen support are also coming to mobile. Google Assistant is out of beta on mobile devices and can be used to send messages and hear items from calendar. And Google's lower cost Google Workspace Essentials Bundle now includes chat, Jamboard, and also calendar. Yeah, I, th I think a lot of these features are probably not terribly surprising to folks. They're like, oh, okay, I did, either I didn't realize they didn't have this or this is something I've been expecting and, and I'm glad to see like assistant coming out of beta, et cetera. Uh, the focus on frontline workers, of course, makes sense uh, in the times we live in. But I think what struck me most is how Google is positioning this as more people are going to be splitting their time between the office and work from home. We're going to see yeah. some people continue to work from home from here on out. We're going to see some people coming into the office a few days a week uh, and working from home the rest of the time. Let's promote, you know, what really is just a typical out of office uh, setting as a, a benefit for somebody who's got a mixed workforce like that. And I think that's that's interesting to see them positioning that way because even if these particular features aren't like revolutionary in embracing that. They're just sort of taking existing stuff and massaging it. It it means they're thinking along those lines and we might see some more innovative features coming in down the road. Nicole, how much do you use workspace uh, apps for Google, if any? I mean, our the, the I mean, Gadget, for example, and a lot, I'm sure a lot of companies, they like we run on G Suite or, or I guess workspaces now that it's called. Um, and like it's our lives revolve around it basically calendar, Google Meet, uh, you know, docs. It's like that's our entire work life is is housed within uh, Google's work Google's workspaces. So this makes sense to me, especially in terms of like seeing how available somebody is and seeing how and I think it would be interesting to see if you could somehow um say in the calendar, hey, uh, I have, uh, you know, especially for working families, if you could say, hey, uh, I'm homeschooling my kids between this hour and this hour. And hopefully that will, you know, <laughs> you can sort of like slot that in somehow. Say so like, even though I'm not like busy, I'm busy. Yeah. 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 And like have it's, it's that. Like, it's like the, you know, yeah, the half busy type thing. And we actually yeah. run, you know, into that with our team as well. It's like, hey, when are you like, for sure not available or like yeah. kind of if you really need me. So those nuances really come into play, especially when everybody's at home. And having a, a, a visually easy to see representation of when someone might actually be in the office versus not is going to become more important. Uh, Cause if you're like, Oh, I want to, I want to set a meeting with Nicole when she's in the office, but I know she's only in the office a couple of days a week. Let me see which days that is. Uh, and yeah. I can set that meeting. And of course, meetings are problematic and take up too much time. Everybody agrees. So we're seeing lots of tools to kind of help you chart just how much time the meetings take up. I, I don't see a lot of solutions. I see a lot of data. Like here, you can see just how bad your meetings are at sucking up your time. <laughs> Uh, but nobody's right. come up with the button yeah. that'll like Perhaps reduce Perhaps you'd like to join Clubhouse yeah. Yeah. and be in more <laughs> meetings all the time. Uh, well, this is not going to help you <laughs> reduce your meetings, but it will help you stay a little more secure. Researchers from Nanyang Technological University Singapore, along with some researchers from Yale University and Trinity College Dublin, developed a one millimeter long laser. That's a very, very tiny laser, one millimeter long, that can generate 250 terabytes of random bits per second. That's more than 100 times faster than computer-based RNGs, random number generators. Uh, and generating random numbers, really important for computing, especially important for cryptography. Uh, this can also create multiple bit streams simultaneously. The light bounces between mirrors interfering with itself. That creates intensity fluctuations at 254 spots every trillionth of a second. That's how you create the random numbers. The camera they use to test it would fill up its memory every couple of nanoseconds and then have to upload. It could it 
almost could not keep up with this thing. Researchers hope to be able to incorporate the laser and the camera tracking system into a chip. That's, again, how small this is, uh, so that it can directly feed random numbers into the computer, with cryptography, of course, being the obvious application for this. This is cool, right? Yeah, it's very cool. I mean, I think if someone were to say, okay, Tom, uh, does this mean that my password generator will be stronger. I mean, what what are the real world applications of something like this? Yeah, so, so random numbers are necessary in all kinds of cryptography applications. Uh, it means faster cryptography, stronger. One, one of the knocks on, on adding uh, strong cryptography, uh, strong crypto to certain aspects of your computer is it slows things down. Uh, and so this won't, speed up all the aspects of it, uh, but it certainly would speed up one of them. Uh, and the more of them you can speed up, the the faster cryptography gets. Of course, cryptography getting faster and faster all the time anyway. So so yeah, it, it, it can help with that. And Nicole, who wouldn't want a very tiny laser inside their computer creating random numbers? Nobody. I mean, why would <laughs> you want one? <laughs> it's so great. Yeah, it's like having yeah. a pet squirrel or something. I'm not sure you can show it off. Uh, but no, no, it was just behind the scenes, you know. It does. It does feel like the kind of thing where uh, we we saw some scientists with a great idea, and it worked. I, the The reading that I get from reading about this is that it worked even better than they thought. They're like, "Man, our sense yeah. barely keep up." That's great. Yeah, and and you don't see that too often. So, hopefully, uh, we will see this turned into a an easy to incorporate chip. Uh, my guess is at the beginning, it's an enterprise level thing, probably meant for data centers yeah. that, that really need speed and all that. So you might not see it in your own laptop, but a uh, cool thing to keep in, in uh, keep track of. And and this is being developed principally in Singapore. Uh, if if you're looking to look into it further, uh, Yale University and Trinity College Dublin scientists participated in the research, but the team is is centered at Nanyang uh, Technological University in Singapore. Well, I don't know when the last time you were in a McDonald's drive-in was, but you might have noticed that your wait time has shrunken a bit. <laughs> McDonald's uh, is doing a lot of things to make sure that you get in and out and get on with your life uh, as quickly as possible. The latest is testing out its smart its own smart assistant to speed up its own drive through service at certain locations. Not all locations, but... That's yeah, that's what it is working on. The results seem to be a mixed bag, however. Online reviews of a location that is tasting, testing rather the AI order taking include robot drive through avoid. <laughs> that person did not like the idea of, of a smart assistant taking their order. Another customer posted a TikTok video showing the McDonald's system executing an order for two Oreo McFlurries with a caption that read, this is the most dystopian thing I've ever seen in the 27 years of my life. <laughs> so uh, I've got the TikTok video uh, queued up, but it gets... Here we go. We're currently serving a limited menu, so please review the menu before ordering. Let me know what I can get for you. <laughs> uh, it's not as natural as a Siri medium or an Amazon. Flurries? All right. I mean, Would you like anything else? That's no, it. No. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Your total will be six fifty-eight. Please pull forward. Yeah. So, no, that's, so th that, and that's the one that said this is the most dystopian thing I've ever seen. Right. I, I get it now. Well, do you though? I mean, to me, this is the the argument that I have with people who are like. I do not want to smart anything in my house. You do not look at me. You do not talk to me. <laughs> you do not hear what I'm saying. No. And I'm like, but it's so helpful. <laughs> so like this, this is like, I'm like, okay. I mean, someone, whether it's a human or the AI version of the human is like, what do you want? I'm going to say this back to you and make sure that right. that's what you want. To me, I'm like, great, even better. And perhaps that person who used to be sitting at the, you know, the window can be better utilized to do sure. something that they're better at, right? But don't you think the brightness needs to be turned up on that voice a little? It I was guess. a little bit uh, 
soft and oh but it, honestly if it was like you. okay your order is ready that'd, that'd be weird like, yes, oh my god it's so weirder. annoying yeah 100 <laughs> yeah they're, they're not just doing this at mcdonald's yet they're too they're also doing it at white castle apparently uh yeah, and yeah. white castle oh, in wow. the cnn article was saying like we do have to tweak it because you know somebody walk uh, drives up and gives me and says give me two castles with cheese on them the voice assistant didn't understand what that meant like they were, right, they were only yeah. programmed to handle a certain amount of variations in how you order. Yeah, where it out? Is, is it like, lost uh, on that the voice was actually really clear, and we've had true. drivers for a couple of decades, and we can't understand what they're saying, but with this, yeah. you can understand it clearly. That, that TikTok oh, order was from inside a car, and it was that right. clear. Yeah, that that alone yeah, would like, that's good. Be to sign up for this. I'm 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 ready. Just let me <laughs> understand what the other AI or person is saying, and I'm in. Yeah. I mean, in all practicality, I'm with you, Sarah. Like, this is great. It's clear. It's it's efficient. It's likely. It's less likely to get my order wrong. Yeah. There's just something, something a little. I don't know. I, don't I know. mean, give me my I nuggets. Don't. That's all I was here for. <laughs> yeah. You know. I, did it cut down my nugget wait time? <laughs> right. Did it cut down my nugget wait time? If so, I am happy. Thank you. In advance. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's check out the mailbag. Let's do it. Patreon supporter David Ward, who is a legally blind assistive technology instructor, chimed in our discussion on AR glasses last week where we were like, well, if there's, you know, uh, if, you know, if if I'm wearing them and I can identify Tom or Nicole, is that okay? What if they don't want me to do that? What about facial recognition in the future? And David says, the technology could help people like him a lot by recognizing students or workmates when they walk into an office or a classroom. David said, or a friend coming by to give me a ride in front of my busy apartment building. Warcam, which we'll put in our show notes, orcam.com, has an integrated feature like this into their AR glasses, David says, minus the cloud sourcing of the images. You have to program everybody's face into the system and assign them a name. Looks like they're even making a lapel-style device that does that as well. David says, I'm not as interested in this as more generic or programmable object and people recognition, like a smart door cam that could recognize when my paratransit bus has arrived to take me to work or when there's a UPS man or a truck at my front door. He also adds, Microsoft's Seeing AI app has a similar functionality built in, plus LiDAR to tell you how far away a person is. If you can see, if you can't see well or at all, that kind of information can be really important, especially these days when you're trying to figure out if somebody has moved into the grocery line, if you're maintaining six foot distance during COVID times, et right. cetera. Yeah, you may not be able to see that person if you're six feet away, and this could tell you like, hey, time time to move up. That's good stuff. Hey, and and really uh, pr appreciate you uh, sharing that insight with us, David. Good stuff. Yeah, yeah. Thanks so much, David. Uh, if you have any feedback for us, anything we've talked about, anything we might talk about in a future show, feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com is where to send that email. Also, shout out to patrons at our master and our grandmaster levels. Today, they include Ken Hayes, Tony Glass, and Jeffrey Zilks. Also, we have a new boss, and we'd like to shout her out. Amy Ray is our boss because Amy supports us on Patreon. Thank you so much, Amy, and thank you everyone who supports us on Patreon as well. Also, thanks to Nicole Lee. Nicole, so good to have you back. Let folks know where they can keep up with your work. Um, you can check up. You can check out all all of my uh, writings and stories on Engadget.com. You can also go to my Twitter page at twitter.com/nicole for um, other updates of, on my life and my work. Excellent. Uh, Nicole, the first person I ever followed on Twitter and the next person you should follow, twitter.com <laughs> slash Nicole. Uh, hey, if you want to know about blockchain, non-fungible tokens are all the rage these days. We've talked about them. Uh, we have an episode of Know a Little More coming out this Thursday on the blockchain. Explains what it is, how it works, why it works uh, from multiple perspectives, not just NFTs, but but Bitcoin and others as well. You can get that as well as explanations on a whole lot of other topics like Wi-Fi 6, 5G and more at knowalittlemore.com. Hey, folks, we are live Monday through Friday, 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 21.30 UTC. And you can find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. And guess what? We're going to be back doing this all again tomorrow with our guest, Chris Ashley. Talk to you then.
This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Private Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>